What's good, everyone? It's Chambers from ChambersMixed.com. Today, we're going to be doing another secret gem technique trick tips video for three mixing techniques that you're going to want to use in your beats. And before I need that, special announcement. Next month, July, I'm dropping my first placement breakdown course on my online class. So this means I'm going to be breaking down my placements like in the FL Studio session file so you can see all the VSTs that I used or all the synths that I use, the MIDI, the chords, the melodies, the sound selection, the drums, the mixing, all that stuff. And I'm talking about songs that I've done for like Future and 21 Savage and Lil Durk and KSI, Shaq Lizzy, all stuff like that. So sign up now at ChambersCourses.com. I would love to have you and besides the placement breakdown course you're gonna have access to plenty of production courses for trap we got r&b on the way we got drill on the way and of course the basics courses basics about music theory chord scales melodies mixing drums structuring all that stuff it's a great resource to learn from as a producer no matter what level you're at all right so we're on internet explorer again i just made this beat uh, this is what we're going to be using for the mixing tricks So the first trick I'm gonna show you guys is reversing. And it's not just reversing a melody, I'm talking about reversing into a different sound. It's a cool like effects technique. So first you gotta pick your instrument that you wanna use to reverse. I wanna do this piano melody cause I have chords here. And I also have a melody. So I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna hit this scissor thing right here. This is called Edison and I'm gonna record it. So I wanna go to on play cause we wanna record it once I hit the play button. Then you wanna make sure that it's armed for recording. So hit that and we're gonna hit play. And we're only gonna get like the very first bit. So watch, literally that much. I'm gonna drag this, see what button I hit. It's up here, top right, drag it into the playlist. We're gonna edit it a little bit more. So zoom in. I'm gonna open it in the sampler by double clicking it. I'm gonna go to de-clicking mode and I'm gonna hit the bottom one, crossfade. Make sure stretch mode isn't on. I'm gonna hold alt and drag it in. So it kind of like fades it at the end. What I'm gonna do next is route that into the mixer. I'm gonna cut all the low end right here in this EQ that's built in. And then I'm gonna add some reverb, a good amount. So it has like a nice like tail of reverb out at the end. See how you can still hear it? I'm gonna go back into Edison. I'm gonna hit the delete button on my keyboard to get rid of that. I'm going to record it again. Same thing. Good. You want to make sure that you get all of it. Let's drag it in again. And then we can get rid of this. So I'm just going to delete that. And we'll name this reverse piano. I'm going to double click again. This time I'm going to hit reverse. I'm going to come over here to the end. Um, I'm going to clip it just a little bit because I don't really want the full thing. Maybe just to here. And then I'll make sure that that's like just about one bar. So I'll line it up. Good. So now here's what that's going to sound like. We have this reverse piano going into the normal piano. Right now with the rest of the beat, it sounds like this. So that's like a cool reverse effect that you could use. You could put it at the end, so it's like this. So there you go, that's our first technique, the reverse effect technique. And let's move on to the next one. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to do a filter automation. So you ever hear like in a song when it sounds like the beat goes underwater, it's cause you're putting a filter on it. So I'm gonna grab Fruity Parametric EQ2, it's a stock plugin. I'm gonna go to presets and I'm gonna go to 20 to 18K, right? So here's what the filter sounds like. It's because you're cutting out, oh, I haven't cut myself out. <laughs> Cause you're cutting out all the high-end frequencies like you're gonna hear like my voice is under a blanket now because i'm cutting out the high-end frequencies that's pretty much what we're doing with the beat and of course if you want to learn more about eq and like frequencies and all that stuff a great resource again is my online class chamberscourses.com we're gonna automate the filter meaning when you automate something over time you're changing the value so i want it to sound like this pretty much but without me having to manually do it but it's gonna sound like this So the knob that controls this is right here. See in the bottom right? What you want to do is right click it. You want to hit create automation clip. That will create a clip here in the playlist. And pretty much this line controls the knob that we just saw in the EQ. So full like this, it's normal. But if I were to bring it down, that's like we're bringing the filter down. See, so we're going to automate it. We'll start it at full. I'm going to right click to create a point. We'll go down, 
and I'll right click to create another point right here and we'll go back up. And this is what it's going to sound like. So that's the filter automation technique. So I'll leave that on the second half for now. The last trick I'm going to show you is duplicate FX is what I call it. So I'm going to grab these chords, right? I'm going to hold shift and click out to create a duplicate of it. You want to click right here and hit make unique. I'm going to put it up an octave and going up an octave is going up 12 notes, right? Now, if there's 100 cents in one note to go up 12 notes, you have to go up 1200 cents. So you just go all the way up as far as you can go on the pitch knob right here. It says 1200 cents in the top left. So we're up an octave. That sounds kind of crazy. What I'm going to do is route that into the mixer, grab an EQ, and we're pretty much going to put a bunch of effects on it. Filter it. I'm going to add crystallizer. Really, you could add whatever effects that you want. It's just to make it sound really different and cooler. I'm going to add some reverb to it. I'll add fruity flanger and lower the mix level. And now we have a duplicate copy of the chords. All we did was we put it up an octave and we put a bunch of effects on it, right? It sounds a lot more spaced out. And you want to have it like really low in volume in the background. And that's going to add like a new texture to the beat. So now listen. kind of subtle like without it it's like this but if you want to add like another section that has more ambience and more texture to it then you add that duplicate copy in and there you go so those are the three mixing techniques that i have to share with you guys today remember the first one is the reverse into the music Love that one for sure. Use that all the time. Then we have the filter technique. Automation. And then we have the higher chord duplicate. Where I just took the audio, duplicated it, made it unique, put it up an octave, put it in the mixer, added a bunch of effects, lots of reverb, lowered it in volume. And now we have a brand new sound. Well, yeah, those are the three secret techniques that I love to use when I'm mixing sometimes. If you're interested in more knowledge about mixing or production in general, music theory, and you're looking forward to see those placement breakdown courses, check out chamberscourses.com, my online class, and sign up. I would love to have you. Shout out to everyone who's already signed up and learning every day. Really appreciate you guys. So come join the class and take your craft to the next level. Leave a comment. Let me know what videos you guys want to see in the future. It's Chambers from chambersmixed.com, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.